Hello, and welcome to my YouTube page, Tanya Hyden Ministries. Listen, this month we are celebrating Pastor Wives Appreciation Month. Shout out to all of my pastor wives out there that are watching. I send you love and greetings to you, my sister in Christ. Listen, if you're looking for a support group, go join Pastor's Wife Connection Group on my Facebook page group where I go live every third Thursday. I would love to encourage you and empower you and remind you the importance of staying connected to God, marriage, and ministry, okay? That was my little shameless plug. Go jump on that. I would love for you to be a part of that with me. But I want to share some principles this month. Uh, we'll be doing something really, really soon live with a young lady where we're going to be talking about when pastor wives pray. But today, I want to talk about five things I wish someone would have told me when I became the pastor of New De the pastor's wife of New Destiny Church. I wish someone would have told me these things. And I want to share those things with you on today, celebrating you, pastor's wives. And to that person who's watching, don't stop watching. Listen, you can also learn from these prim principles to see through the lens of another pastor's wife. So here it is. Listen, the first thing I wish I would have known was to be me. <laughs> I wish I would have known to be me. Um, be me because nobody can beat you being me. and can, Nobody can beat you being you. But I should. I wish I would have known nobody would have been beat me being me. But I was so busy trying to be like other pastors and do what, the, you know, kind of, you know, wear what they wear, look like that. Because I didn't know what it really was to be a pastor's wife. Like, what am I supposed to dress like? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to wear the suits? Am I supposed to wear a certain hairstyle? Am I supposed to wear certain clothes? Is there a certain, you know, because going around and being in church all your life and you see other pastor wives and how they dress and what they do, you will find yourself losing who you are. Ah, new book coming out. You are the fragrance, the fragrance that you carry for your church, for your ministry. So I wish someone would have told me, girl, just be you. Be, be, be you. Be me. I wish someone would have told me, be free. Uh, be free enough to allow people to learn your, um, your character, uh, not character, but learn your personality and who you are. Um, I, my husband always says that he wish, you know, he would have, you know, allowed people the opportunity to get to know me more because um, he didn't want me to get hurt and on top of I didn't want to hurt anybody because I can be very, very, uh, very, very uh, blunt. And sometimes I can hurt people's feelings, but at the same time, I could be very, very uh, loving. Uh, so with that, I found out that I, I wish someone would have told me, just be free. And if they like you, like you. If they don't, they don't. And you find yourself as pastor wives. I found myself as a pastor's wife to where... I didn't want anyone not to like me, so I did everything I could not to cause you to, or cause anyone to tolerate me, but to appreciate me and did not realize down the road that it didn't matter what you did, sugar. It didn't matter what you did, how you did. Um, there was going to be some type of fault in you because everybody is not going to like you like that as a pastor's wife. I wish someone would have told me, just be free. I'm in the best place I could ever be as a pastor's wife because I love, I just be me. And it is, I, I pray you like me and I pray, I, I don't know, is that just being between you and the Lord? I heard Steve Harvey say this, is that, you know, we should always be evolving no matter who you are. You don't allow anyone to stop your growth. Don't allow anyone to stagnate you in your ministry as a pastor's wife. But I would also say as you're willing to evolve, there are some that's going to say that you are changing. You are different or she thinks she's all that, or she is bougie, or she is, the, they're going to say all these things about you. But here's the thing that you got to know is that you haven't changed, but the opinion of others have changed. I'm still the same first lady that started New Destiny in 2010. I'm still the holy hood one. I'm still the gangster one. But I'm also a woman that has been through some stuff in 2015, went through some stuff in my body that allowed me to be humble in my now. And as long as you remember that, that I'm going to stay humble in everything that I do. And I'm still the cool chick that you knew. But at the end of the day, your opinion changed about me. I didn't change. Be okay with that. Be free. <laughs> be free. Okay, the other thing, number three. Well, I'm at number three. Be aware. Be aware 
that everything and everybody that come in your church is not your Hughes cheerleader. Yes, they are not your cheerleader. Everybody's not your cheerleader. You got to be aware that spiritual things happen within the ministry and you got to be aware spiritually. And that's why I encourage right now in my mentorship, if they're watching, ah, love them so much, uh, rocking out with some amazing ladies around the world. And we've been talking about the importance of making sure that you be aware spiritually and you know by the spirit, try the spirit by the spirit. And you know that everybody that come in speaking in tongues and laying hand dead, they don't mean nothing. You got to be willing to know that at the end of the day, you got to be aware spiritually to what's going on in your ministry. Okay. You got to be able to, I always say, yeah, I used to say, Lord, I want to be able to see everything. I don't want to just see no more. I need to smell spiritually. I want to be able to sniff the enemy and know what he's doing spiritually that I don't get caught off guard. Right. You want to be able to be aware of the enemy and his tricks and his schemes that he will cause to tear up your ministry, to tear up what God has built. And you won't, don't want to ever let that happen. And sometimes it does, but you got to be willing to be aware to know that, okay, this was a part of our growth and it's okay. So we're going to continue to grow, right? And I wish someone would have told me that you will have to be present. Be present. So not only be me, be free, be aware, but be present. Uh, meaning that even when you're at church, there are times I've been at church and I was there, but I wasn't present mentally. I wasn't present. You know, my husband was not able to pastor me as his wife. Oh, that's a whole nother subject. Allowing my husband to pastor me and I wasn't present. There are times I've shown up and I was just there because of all of the other distractions and craziness that was happening, I wasn't able to be present. I wish someone would have told me that you have to be present if you want to grow and if you want to grow from your pastor husband. You got to be willing to be present. Last but not least, after I learned how to be me, be free, be aware, be present, I wish someone would have told me this. Be bold. Yes, be bold. When you know who you are in God versus what everything and everybody else, even the pastor, your husband has to say, be bold in God, understanding who you are and who you are designed to. How are you able to get to a point to be bold? It wasn't until I learned what God is to me and what I am to him, that I was able to see myself through God's eyes and not people. So it's learning that I gotta be bold and whatever I do in this season, however you're moving, whatever God has called you to do, as long as you know, you gotta make sure you communicate properly with your husband, making sure you have the right time, the right tone, right texture, all of that stuff when you're communicating with your husband because when you become bold and God and have what my spiritual daughter calls God confidence, you got that confidence to the point to where you know who you are, you know what you're designed to do and you're gonna do everything that you're called to do in this season, not trying to hurt anybody, not trying to step over nobody to get where you're going, not trying to dog everybody to get where you're going, but God, I'm just gonna do what you call me to do and what I was designed to do here on earth. And it may not just be in the four walls of your church. It may be way bigger than that, but you got to understand who you are as the pastor's wife. So if I would have known, now I'm getting to a point, almost 12 years getting to a point, And I know I got a whole lot to learn, but if somebody would have told me, girl, just be you, you don't have to be anybody else. While you're being, you be free, man. Because no matter what people going to say, do whatever, not only that, be aware. Be aware that everybody that's smiling your face don't love you. Everybody that tell you that they love you, their actions speak louder than their words. Watch their actions. Pay attention to their actions and their approach to you. And when their actions change, they're changing on you. No, be aware of that. Be present. Be present in your present as my husband preaches. Be present. And when you're present, you're able to grow. You're able to learn. You're able to listen. You're able to lead. You're able to love other people when you're able to do that. But most of all, be bold. Be bold in what the Lord has called you to do. Pastor's wife, go ahead, girl. It's in you. You're designed to encourage, empower, and equip people about and be the light that God has called you to be. I'm pretty sure that's for every woman, but I come to talk to you particularly. The pastor's wife. Whatever you do, be you, be free, and be willing to be aware, be present, and be bold. 
Listen, happy appreciation month to all pastors' wives. Remember to stay connected to God, stay connected to your marriage, stay connected to ministry. In that order and watch God work. Love you much. Bye -bye. Thank you.